<gasps> hey guys, who's excited to learn how to draw a grid in perspective? Okay, calm down, calm down. I know you're excited. But actually, learning how to draw a grid in perspective is a super fundamental skill. Eh? Fun? Super fundamental? It, no? Okay. Well, we're not just going to be guessing on where everything in space goes with this grid, but we're going to be learning how to mathematically make the grid recede at an exponential rate. If you do like math though, I'm sorry, there won't be any. That was probably the most mathy I'll get this whole time. It's just that the technique we're using is going to make the grid perfect without the use of a lot of numbers. Okay, let's get into the nitty gritty. Uh, <laughs> uh dude, you gotta stop it with the puns. Uh, okay. <laughs> All right, so here I have a digital canvas and I figured most of you are working analog with paper, pencil, and a ruler. So I have a little ruler here to help you visualize what I'm about to do and the magic I will create here on my Clip Studio Canvas. So basically, I'm lining up my ruler to be parallel with the bottom of my page, and I'm making a line going from zero to 12 inches. However, I know most of you probably aren't working on something bigger than 12 inches, so go ahead and just draw a line that can be easily split in half, like six inches or something. Once I have that, and I am switching to a new color by the way to distinguish between my grid and my guidelines, I'm going to find the exact middle of my line here at the six inch mark. And I'm going to draw a vertical line straight up to the top of my page. Doesn't have to be the very top, but near it. This is where my vanishing point's going to go. Plop. And I'm erasing the middle line here, but we're gonna just end up redrawing it anyway, so you don't have to erase it. Then I'm going to connect the ends of my lines to the vanishing point with some orthogonal lines. And now I have a big triangle. Yay! So the next thing we have to do is to draw our first grid mark on the triangle thing here. Let me explain. We are drawing a grid in perspective. And obviously you know that because that's why you clicked on the video. But anyways, if you were looking at this grid straight up and down, it would look like a rectangle with a bunch of lines in it, dividing it into equal parts. But when the grid goes into perspective, the lines no longer appear the same size and the once equal parts are now getting smaller as they go further back. That's just perspective. So to do that, we have to draw our closest grid line, which helps place our other grid lines. And I'm just gonna place mine here like two inches up. Then we have to find the middle of our grid section. And this is why I erased the middle line because if you don't have a grid that's perfectly centered with your vanishing point, you need to be able to find the middle of that grid and doing it without measuring is so much easier too. So to find the middle, I'm gonna make an X by connecting this bottom corner to the opposite top corner and vice versa. Awesomeness. And then wherever the middle of the X is, is where the line intersects and is where the middle of the grid shape is. So I'm going to redraw that middle line and yours should match up perfectly, I hope. Okay. Here comes the rule or pattern to our grid. If I know this bottom corner and this bottom corner, and I know where the middle of the grid is, then I know this top corner and this top corner. Little confusing. Yeah, let's put it into action. So if I know this bottom corner and the middle, which is now going to be this intersection here, and if I know the other bottom corner and the middle, then I know this top corner and this top corner. All I have to do now is just connect the top corners together with a horizontal line. Whew, broke a sweat with that one. <laughs> but yay, this is the basic pattern to making grids in perspective. And practice always makes perfect, so let's do a few more. Starting now from the next grid corner, not this very bottom one we've been working on, but the one above that, I'm gonna connect the corner through the middle point and to the orthogonal line. Same on the other side, gonna connect the bottom corner through the middle point and to the orthogonal line. And then a horizontal line connecting to the top corners. Yes, see how it's getting a little smaller each time we do this? That's perfect. 
I'm also going to add some vertical grid lines. So every two inches for me, I'm going to connect the bottom to the vanishing point. I'm going to keep going until I don't want to any longer, or until my lines get too thick that it just becomes a big mess at the end. And I suggest you do the same for practice. And once I am all done with drawing my grid, I can erase the rest of the orthogonal lines up here. And for funsies, I'm going to draw a little room so you can get a real sense of why grids are super duper important. Little door here, and I'm using the grids to line up the door and its width. And a window on the other side, maybe with some depth too. Ooh, fancy. So this is how you draw a grid in perspective. But this room wouldn't really look like this because the horizon line and vanishing point are so high. It would be like I'm taped to the ceiling looking down. <laughs> but remember, this is just practice, and when you're actually drawing a grid, you'll probably have a normal horizon line. Probably. <laughs> I feel like no one's going to watch this. <laughs> Unless I'm forcing you. Hi, Mom and Dad! But anyways, I hope you enjoyed today's very informative video. See you next time where I teach you how to draw in three-point perspective. Bye-bye!